Yeah. Okay, so I'm Shelley Baker Guard, and I volunteered to help with this very interesting uh, presentation that Gary Gay is going to be giving. And the uh, title is Renge, a modern linking form. Uh, and it's going to be a workshop, as many of you just heard, uh, and it will introduce you to the collaborative linking form called Renge. And uh, it will be taught by Gary Gay, who is its creator. And this will give you a brief introduction to the history if you're not uh, familiar with it and how to write a two or three person renge. And it's, it's a very much uh, collaborative, fun activity. And I participated in them and you generally end up with laughing a lot and enjoying each other's company. Uh, Gary Gay, just as a very brief, uh, biographical note, is the president of the Haiku Poets of Northern uh, California, a past president of the Haiku Society of America. And in 1991, he founded North America, Haiku North America, a biennial haiku conference. And that's well attended by people throughout the world. In 1996, he co-founded the American Haiku Archive in Sacramento, California. And he is the creator of the, oh, and, and just as I mentioned, he created Renge. So Gary, with that, why don't you go ahead and start? Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm glad you could, could join this session with me. So uh, as, it, as it's been said, I, uh, I created Renge in uh, August of 1992. Actually, August 9th, I presented it at a, a Rinku workshop where some Japanese masters came over from Japan. And um, I struggled with the Rinku. I had been writing. Gary, you need to come off mute. Uh, I found that I found the Rinku to be very complicated. So I came up with this form. I kind of made some points about what wasn't working for me in Rinku and what would work for me, what would be better for me. And I, I created the Renge. The Renge itself is simply a word play on uh, ring, the old court ring, Renga, R-E-N-G-A. I simply added a Y for Renge. Um, the, modern, the modern writing is Rinku. Uh, and so there, there came Renge. So what I came up with was uh, initially was a two-person form, a six-verse two-person form. I chose a six-verse because I wanted it to be publishable. I'd seen most of the publications were willing to publish um, haiku sequences. Often they'd be about six verses. So I thought, okay, well, that would fit perfectly on a journal page. And yet when you were writing Ringa, Rinku, um, they were not getting published as often because they take four pages. Generally speaking, they're written in 36 verses. That's sort of the classical standard, but they could be 100 verses. So I thought, okay, well, let's, let's do something that's publishable and let's keep it short and brief. I don't want to have the devices that a Rinku has. There's no moon devices. There's no flower or love links. You know, it's, I want to keep it. And, and Rinku travels through four seasons. I wanted to stay in this place and this time and be on point about what, what I wanted to write. I wanted it very haiku-like. I wanted to be in the moment, in the place, and I wanted all the verses to be haiku verses, even the two-liners. I know it's not common that people, haiku poets write two-liners, but you can do them. You'll get stronger at them as you write them, and you'll find that they're, you know, you can do them. They're a challenge, that's fine if it's a challenge. Um, so once I decided how long I wanted the verses to be, and I wanted it to be haiku-like and stay in one place. The main thing is it's thematic. You stay on one topic. The whole point about Renge is it's a thematic form of poetry, collaborative form of poetry. So the main things to know about Renge is simply the pattern. There, it's Whether it's three people or two, two people, it's six verses. And the pattern, generally speaking, is the first and a two-person one, uh, you have poet A and poet B. Poet A starts out with three lines. That's, that's a haiku-like verse. Poet B then has two lines. And then poet A comes back with three lines. 
and then you change places. So then you've got poet B with three lines, and then poet A has two lines, and then poet uh, B has three lines at finishing its poem. I did this change in the middle on purpose. I, in a Rinku, you have a master, and everyone submits to the master, and the master decides which poem is going to follow the next poem in, in sequence. But we don't have a master, and mostly we don't consider ourselves masters. You know, people don't join. You know, we assign masters if we're going to write a rinku. But in this case, we're assigning ourselves to be masters. So when you're writing with two people, you're equally important. Or you're equally special. So one person gets the the good luck of starting the verse, and the and the poet B, the the last, the second poet gets to be the poet who gets to end the verse. So you both have a position of power. You're both important. It's a complete artistic collaboration. You want to work together. You want to talk to each other. You want to laugh and have fun. You get to learn your learn about your partner. You can share information about each other. Um, and because it's a collaboration, when you're writing your verses, feel free to, to talk to each other. Say, look, I like this verse you wrote, but it'd be better if you change the first, first line with the third line and it will sound better. Work on the poems together. You're not, it's not really like you're a critic and criticizing. You're helping to make the total renge one complete, really well-written poem. Um, so renge uh, also have titles. Um, generally, the title comes from either a line in the in the in the poem, or it maybe it's a place. I wrote some poems with Michael and a friend John on Hammerhorn Mountain, and we ended up calling one of the poems poems Hammerhorn Mountain or Hammerhorn Lake. So um, Titles can be suggestive. Maybe you're writing about, every, maybe every verse in the Renge has some suggestion of red, red bandana, red sunset, red strawberries. But maybe you don't want to say red in, in the first verse. Maybe you want to say something suggestive. Or maybe when you were writing, you never wrote, said the word red. You, you wrote about things that were suggestive of the word red. And now you need to say something red in the title. So if people read the poem, they're saying, well, what ties, what tied this together? What's the theme here? I don't see the theme. And maybe the title will help them find the theme. So titles are important. They can be playful. They can be fun. They can just tell you what it is. They can be suggestive. They can be mysterious. You'll work it out as you go along. You'll find ways to title your poems. So um, think of them as a kaleidoscope. You know, you know, you're twisting that kaleidoscope and all the things fall together into a pattern. You, you, now you've got this beautiful little image. Or my friend John Thompson calls them. He says, Renge really are a six pack of haiku. Remember how you had those little plastic things that held the six cans together? Well, what really connect those six cans with that invisible clear plastic binder. And so that's really what this is. So you're, you're, you're linking and shifting in a Renge, but not like a, the way in a Renku. In a Renku, you're shifting off into outer space. You've got to be a long ways from each other. After three verses, you really radically shift. But in Ringe, you don't do that. You're staying in one place in one time on one topic. Uh, so your shifting is very subtle if there's that much shifting. The main thing that makes a, a Ringe successful is if you if you stay to the theme. If if someone writes something that doesn't make sense, you know, you can't see the theme in it, it's probably not going to be very successful because nobody's going to understand it. What are they? What you know? It made sense until here, and what this verse doesn't seem to fit with everything else. So it's thematic. You get so maybe you're more writing to a theme than you really are writing to the verse before you. But the verse before you is very special because um, it is the suggestion of where you're going to go writing next. I mean, you have to have an idea where you're going. So even if you know what the theme is. Now, personally, when I write Renge. I've developed this over time. I, write, I try to write ahead of my partner. If, if it's your turn to write and you're following my verse I've already given you, well, I'm not just going to sit there and just, well, wait for you to give me your verse and now I'm going to write to your verse. I'm going to write ahead of you because I probably already know what we're writing about. Even if I'm not 100% sure what the theme is, I'm going to write ahead of you because a number of reasons. One, it speeds the process up, gives me something to do while I'm waiting. And even if none of the haiku I write can be used in this renge, I now got a lot of good rank haiku I can use someplace else. So I win all kinds of different ways. So that's just a suggestion. Not everybody does it, but that's what I do. Um, 
two ways to start a ring game. Um, the best way probably, and the way most people do is you pick a theme. Um, so I've got a list of some themes for you guys. You're not saying you should use any of these, but just when you're going to a breakout room, you want to figure out where, how do we start? Where do we go? You want to pick a topic that's something that's easy to write to, that's got a lot of rich, iconic looking things in the, in the context. For example, Halloween. That's a great topic, right? You got spooks and ghosts and skeletons and pumpkins and Indian corn and there's the colors of the season. There's all kinds of things to write. There's a lot of flavors in there. Um, but you could write on the ocean. They got sand castles and seashells and tides. You can write on insects, thousands of insects. You can write on birds flowers or forever. Um, so try to pick an area where you can find there's a lot of rich content that you can you can write to. You can write to anything. But if you pick something that's too difficult where there's a magic word, like say you're writing on pirates and pirates is in and of itself is a great word. Most of the time when you're writing ring game, if somebody has the best word, they, they write, they take the word pirate in their verse, you don't usually want to use the word pirate again. They've gotten it. So now you got to say raider, or you got to say skulls and bones, or you got to find another way of filling out the flavor of these six verses and not use that same word again. It's not a hard rule. I've written Ringe where I wrote one about snakes, and we had the word snake in all six verses. I've never done it again since that time. It wasn't as strong. It's not, again, it's not a rule. You can do it. I would just shy away from doing it. I, once somebody's got the best word, if you're writing about spiders and someone's got Black Widow, you're thinking nuts. I'd like to have had that word. No, oh, there's still dandy long legs and there's wolf spiders and you know you can go all kinds of ways. So you got to move on to the next best thing. Um, where am I? So um, I'm sure I'm missing something I wanted to tell you, but I'll come back to it. So let me just read you a couple. And let, you, and let you see, this is really where you kind of see what's going on here. So I don't know if you can see this, probably you can't because of the, my focus of my, this is my studio back here, out of focus, it's really messy. Um, so here's a poem written by um, Christopher Harrell and Mike and Dil, Michael Dillon Welsh. And they went to a baseball game in uh, July 28th, 1993, uh, between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the, and the San Francisco Giants. Um, the Dodgers won two to one. Uh, so they call this poem, this renge, taking the field. So Chris starts out and then Michael. So it's pattern of three, two, three, three, two, three. So Chris writes, after the anthem, umpires cluster by the plate. Michael, runner off first, the pitcher's tight jaw. Chris, third inning, fog shadows take the field. Michael, pop fly. Mouths open beyond left field. Chris, double down the line, a puff of chalk. Michael, seventh inning stretch, dust on the catcher's knees. What's beautiful about this, this ringe is that they didn't get past the seventh inning, right? They wrote here and now, in this, in this moment, in this place, we together shared this experience. But they also, sitting side by side, still saw the game differently, right? You can, you know, it's like you have a, a whole different vision when you have two different people talking on the same topic. It's like a car accident. You know, you get to the witnesses and you say, what did you see? What did you see? And they describe two different things. They both saw the same accident, but somehow they just saw it in a different perspective, a different way. But they also, it's a shared experience, right? My friend John, who I do a lot of ring game with, we go off hiking. When we write, he doesn't really want to start off with a topic generally. He likes to just get out. We hike for half an hour. We stop someplace along the line. We say, well, what do you got? We've been writing along the way. And I'll read a few verses. He'll read a few verses. And one of us will say, oh, that'd be a great starter. Let's use that for our renge. We'll write a little bit there. We'll hike a little bit more. We'll write a little bit. And then we'll keep sharing verses back and forth till we've, we've got to finish renge. If you don't finish a renge, that's fine. We often these days now finish them through email. You know, we've gotten all five verses of one last verse. Sun's going down. We got to leave. I'll catch you later. I'll send you the verse through email. So when you get in the breakout rooms and you're writing with somebody else, exchange email addresses, addresses right away so you can stay in contact and maybe finish it later on your own at another time. Don't, don't just let it die. And by the way, I've had 
students in my workshops enter Renge contests and get first place. So you can do it, you know, even if, even if you've got two people never written Renge before, you can still do it, surprisingly. Does it, if you write haiku, you can write Renge. It's just that simple. Um, okay, let me read you, let me, let me read you this one. This one here um, was written between Sherry Hunter Day and myself. I think it was 1995 we wrote this. This, this Renge is entitled Snapshot. So Sherry starts off this, this Renge. Crop photograph, leaving my shadow on the dark room floor. And I reply, from the bottom of the tray, your smile slowly develops. Sherry, pulling me closer in front of the camera, first date. I reply, pinned on the bulletin board, your snapshot. Sherry, roll of negatives, the brightness of your dark eyes. And I end and reply with self timer. I join you in the photograph. Well, a couple of fun things going on here. Different from the one that Michael and Chris wrote, taking the field, it's a pretty basic, simple, very well done ringue. It's just one topic, one place on that thing. But the one that Sherry and I wrote, there's a double theme going on here. Do you see it? It's about photography, right? Snapshots, your image slowly develops. I'm pulling you closer on the first date in front of the camera. I pin the snapshot to the bulletin board. There's a roll of negatives. And I join you in a photograph in the self timer. All things about photography. But there's also sort of a, a first date love story developing here, right? We've, um, we've met. We've, we've taken a picture of each other on a first day. I've, I've developed a thing in a, in a tray in a dark room. I eventually take that photograph and I pin it to a bullet board. At some point I talk about the self timer where I, I join you in that photograph where we've taken a picture together. So we've painted a little story and a double theme story because we've talked both about photography and we talked about this first date. Maybe it's romantic, depends how you read it. Um, but the double theme, the double theme is something I think you really want to, as you develop writing Ringe, you, you want to achieve because I think it shows a more, a, a greater skill level. You know, they, that's not saying a single theme, Ringe can't be a great Ringe and that's not, um, in and of itself can be well done. I write both. I, I've even tried to write a triple theme. One time I even tried to have four themes just playing around. That's pretty hard to do, especially when you're down to a two-liner, right? Because you're trying to, in the two-liners, you still have to have a, a workable haiku, haiku-like verse, and you still have to get whatever themes in there. If it's a single theme, it's very easy to do. If it's a double theme, well, you know, you got to get both, you know, in, in ours, you, in, in the first one that um, Sherry wrote, uh, that I wrote was uh, from the bottom of the tray, your smile slowly develops. I still talked about photography, but I also talked about you, the woman you, because your smile is slowly developing. So you can do it. It's easy to do. You'll, you'll get stronger at it as you write them that way. Um, how much time do I got here? How far have I gone? Probably too far. Um, I think that gives you the gist of it. I'm sure I'm leaving something out. Uh, again, the resources, renge.com. You can find a lot about them there. And um, I don't know, should we? Take any questions, or is that too risky? Should we just one, go? To one one question: What's the what's the pattern for three people? Oh, yeah. I, okay. Yes, Sorry. yes, yes. I, I talk too fast. <laughs> the pattern for three people is: first writer A is three lines, writer B, the second writer is two lines, third writer C is three lines, and then A goes to two lines, B goes to three lines, C goes to two lines. So basically, it's three, two, three, two three, two, A, B, C, A, B, C. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, I didn't show you any examples of three, three, three running people. I guess I should in the future, but I just wanted to get you the feel for it and see how they worked and why they worked the way they did. And that quick history I gave you. What do you There's think? People confused in the chat, Gary. Okay. Maybe we should take some questions. What, what, okay. what do you... uh, I thought on the second, when you were talking about three people, the, uh, the lines changed. You said three, two, three, two. 
So A, Could B, it be C. three, two, three, three, two, three? Does that change if it's three people? If it's three people, it's A, A B, C. Right. Three, two, three, two, three, two. Do I have this wrong here? Okay, so then it changes. Wait a minute. I might be giving you another. Okay, all right. I did confuse you. Okay, so throw that out for the minute. I'll tell you about that in a second. It really should be A, B, C, three, two, three, two, Three, two. This was a version that some people have been sort of writing. I think Charles Trumbull started this when he was living in Chicago. He was calling it sort of a Chicago Renge. So you stayed within the original Renge pattern. Um, but um, I didn't want to confuse you with that. I had it on my notes and somehow I read that instead of the, the traditional pattern. The traditional pattern, the original pattern is uh, ABC, three, two, three, two, three, two. Okay. That's really yeah. Fun. Yeah. Sorry. So, Michael, are you trying to share something? I guess so. I uh, yes, I was trying to share a, a screen that shows the patterns. Good. Good. Do you see it? Does everyone see it? Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Michael. Great. Great. You could screenshot that if you want on your end too, if you want to catch it. This, I think, is on your website, too, renge.com, right? Yeah, I posted a link to this page in the chat. Yeah, it's basically, it's actually an easier pattern. It's three, two, three, two, three, two. OK. Yeah. OK, so Michael, um, did everyone have a chance to see what Michael has posted? OK, so if you could. Yeah, okay, thank you, Michael. All right, so are we ready to do uh, breakout rooms? Any more questions that you need from uh, Gary real quick before we start our workshop? All right, let's go ahead then. And so we've agreed that we're going to do three per breakout room. And uh, Gary, I think you said 20 minutes, is that right? Yeah, I, can we do 20 minutes? Is there time? It's 124. That would put us at one, or my time, 144. Um, sure. That would give us, yeah, just barely enough. I, I think 15, I think 15, 15 minutes would be better. It's cutting it pretty tight. Okay. 15. All right, we'll see what you can get done in 15 minutes. Again, exchange okay. email addresses so you can finish them later. Uh -huh. Thank you, Michael, for putting the form there. I was helpful. Okay, and we have 107. So. Can I ask a question technically? How, how do we access the breakout room? You will be automatically put into it. Okay. So. And keep in mind, Tandem is a journal you can submit your poems to. Okay, let me just. Where, where? There are less people on right now than we originally yeah. had. So I just thought I'd mention that in the chat that you might want to reconfigure again, how many breakout rooms. Yeah, you need about 33. That's what I calculated to um, Ignatius. You could put four people in a room so that you'd have, make sure you have people. Uh, well, if you want to do the workshop though, yeah, it sounds yeah. like we need yeah, three. We don't so. know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Someone's going to be a fourth party, but I can, anyway, here we go. Let's see how it works. Look at all the people you're wiping out in just one stroke of your mouse. <laughs> Thank you, Ignatius. <laughs> yeah. What power. And although I'd love to, to jump into one of the rooms, I'm in the middle of a huge sub sandwich lunch. 
here in Western <laughs> Washington State. So <laughs> full mouths probably wouldn't be helpful. <laughs> Did Gary go into one of the rooms? Uh, let me see. Okay, surely Mark. Yeah, Mark, he is. He's in room 19. Mark, room 21 wants help. Yeah, he's in you room 19. Do you, want, do you want me to go? Uh, Gary's in room 19. Okay, well, surely Mark in room 21 is asking for help. Oh, okay, let me. Um... And you want to join there and find out what she wants, or do you want me to do it? Uh, I can go in there. You can't? Uh, maybe she can. No one else came into the room I was in. Are you there alone? I was there by myself in room 29. Okay. Well, I think she uh, she went in to help somebody in room 21. When she gets back, she'll reassign she re you. Okay, I, can't, I can't I can do it from here. Okay. Or I don't think I can. Let me just see. Oh, maybe I can. I had to find a room that had only three people. I mean, I had only two people. Ignatius, room 17 has only two people. Okay, yeah, same thing with room two. So okay. We didn't join. So you can move her to one of those rooms. Okay, so I'm not sure how to get her in one. She's over here. Um. Um. Is there a button that says join? Or uh, not join, but assign? Hmm. Mm. She would have been better off if she'd have stayed there and let us know. Yeah. We just moved her. I didn't know how to you know without coming back. Yes. Yeah. OK. And Jill Lang in room six has problems, too. Let's see. Six. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. She... So well, just move her. Yeah, I'll move her. Yeah. I'll move her to one. Okay. Yeah, it looks like Susan Birch in room 13 is only one person. Okay, then move her. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll join. Uh, See, I can move her to room 12. Uh, yeah, because Rover, Miss, or Dana Rover is there alone. Yeah. So does that mean you can't put me in a room because I came out of the room? Yeah, it looks like it, because I don't see an option to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. So be it. Yeah, let me. I don't know how either. I have another person in room 27. Right at the top of your list, you have there's a one unassigned. Is that the one that came out? Can we reassign? Oh, it? yeah. Oh, that's Jake, not joined. Oh, OK. I just left my room because I was the only one there. Oh, OK. okay so so he's got the same problem I have. Yeah. But, but why just, doesn't she um, come up as unassigned? I don't know. That's what I was expecting, and I couldn't find her.
Well, that's too bad. But the rest seem to be stable now. Yeah, old Ray's all by himself. Let's see. Oh, yeah, where? I'll move him to 25. I'm not really up to date on the campaign. I'm hearing voice. Uh, okay, I think we need to maybe send a message. How many? Another two minutes. Looks like. <clears throat> And we have whole rooms that didn't join. Hmm. Room one, I have four people. <laughs> I don't know. How that oh, that'll be okay. It's too late in the in the game. Yeah. All right. Got everything else started. Yeah, the rest seem to be okay. Mm -hmm. Good job. <laughs> well, you know, I took that little training and it didn't talk about this. Like someone yeah. goes back to the main room and how to get them back in there. Yeah. Well, it, they yeah. never seem to cover every possibility. Yeah. But I don't understand why she didn't show up as unassigned. Yeah, neither do I. So. Okay. Maybe we'll give them a message, a two minute warning. Uh, are we that late already? It's one thirty five. Yeah. Okay, yeah. send them a two minute warning. Dot your eyes and cross your T's, you're coming out. <laughs> Rain Gay really is fun to write. It is fun. Uh... I think it's a, you know, I I wish it'd be mainstream to be more of like a dinner party game where anyone could do it. Yeah. Really, it's easy enough. Well, and I would imagine it's much more fun. I've never done it in person. It's always yeah. been a long distance, you know, so I imagine doing it together would be a whole lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. And the subtleties of themes can be well, really subtle, you know, very fine. Mm -hmm. All right, we're down to one minute. Like we got more people in the main. All right, I'm gonna close all the rooms here in just a second. All right. All right, so do I see people coming back? Are they? Looks like a bit.
Well, here we go. And let's see, we need Gary. <laughs> Oh, here he is. Hello. Hi, Gary. Okay. So we all get halfway through them? <laughs> yeah, that was too short. Yes, too short. That that didn't feel like 15 or 20 minutes. Um, no. We barely got started. I don't know if anybody... Yeah. Gary. Anybody, yeah. We, we have more time. That I had Michael in our group, so. Well, we and we needed time to introduce ourselves too. So yeah. everybody, everybody knows I'll, Michael. <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah, you yeah, need Michael more. You really group. need. You really need a good hour to do these things. Yeah. Sometimes at conferences like Hiker North America, you know, we'll we'll write in the evening, so we have plenty of time to just socialize and write while we're doing them. But be sure to trade email addresses with each other if you thought you had something going and you wanted to finish them. So. Hey Gary, is it okay? Michael has it typed up to put in the chat. Have what typed up to put in the chat? A ring gay that we did. Whoa, good. Okay hey. with me. It's okay with me. It's not, I'm not running the show. So. I want to yeah. I want to know I want to know how those two got together. And Jay was in it too. Well, you know, I think some money might have exchanged hands. <laughs> yeah. I think oh. so. We like did get a together and polish it up and then submit them to Tandem. But they yeah. both had them. That's right. So, so you, do, you should all keep in mind that there are ring gate contests. HPNC has one. HSA has one. Uh, I think there's one out of the Midwest. There's one, a new one coming out of uh, uh, New Zealand. There are starting to be more and more ring gate contests. And Tandem, of course, is our first fully full ring gate journal out of Canada. Uh, so there's a lot of places to put them. Frogmon, Frog Pond publishes them, um, and there are more and more places starting to publish them. You know, it's been 30 years. It's been how big. Uh, it's been evolving all along. I see it's being written in many languages around around the world. I've tracked at least 20 other languages that are being written in. So um, there are a lot of places, and there are a lot of partners out there that are, that are willing to write them with you. Are there questions I can answer? I don't know how much time we have left. But... Well, I have a question, oh. Gary. Sure. Um, in respects of the form for the free people haiku, uh, for the free for, for free people, Ringo, you the, the, the same poet. Do you, you go? You change the form, or, or whoever's done this has changed the form, so it doesn't go three two three three two three anymore. It just goes more in form of a, a Renku. I wonder whether yes. there's, there's any alternative to that. Well, that's why when I when I had read you by mistake, the other one, that was a that was a form that Charles Trumbull was kind of putting out there. A few people are writing in that form, but mostly the traditional classic acceptable form is the uh, three, two, three, two, three, two pattern. But if you want to experiment and stay in the, the original two person pattern, you could write A3, B2, C3, A2, B3, C2. I think that's how it would go. So that was that's what I thought was better. Hmm. Well, it works, works I'm not, more I'm in not, line. I'm not championing one as being better or the other. It's an alternative, no. right? Okay. I have to say, I've seen people. I've seen six person Renge. We have six poets writing Renge. I've seen solo Renge. I've seen some people writing a thing called a star Renge. I've seen a tri fork Renge and a bi fork Renge. That's where you have a starting verse, let's say in, in, a, in a bi Renge. You have the same starting verse, but then you have different sets of poets writing down the, the other five verses in, the, in a two person pattern. But they start out with the same one opening verse. Uh, and the same thing in the star in the star ring gate, they had a, a ring gate in the center and the five branches like a starfish, they went out, they rode out from it. I've seen very few of those, but early on there were people experimenting with it. It's led to, the ring gate has led to a lot of experimentation. Uh, it's kind of opened the floodgates on that, but 
somehow the ring has survived all that and it's gone 30 years and we're i'm very very proud of that yeah. so um, you know so gary we do have michael uh and david and jay's uh ready to be read okay um, who wants to read it of your group well they could all read it together right oh read that's true together. yeah go ahead yeah read your go title ahead. Need a title. Need a title. <laughs> we, we ran out of time for titles. Okay. First line is the title. What is it? Raindrops. Raindrops. Raindrops on the swimming pool on me. A passing storm peters out. Tornado warning. River rising from the south. The weather lady takes a deep breath. Drop in the barometer. My ears pop. The cellar too small for our neighbors. So that Very was the nice. first one we did. Should we read the other three? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my verse should say from the north instead of from the south. Right. Well, you can see you can see that can be written fairly quickly if you're you're skilled at writing them. Once you get better at writing ringgit, you can write them faster. I still sometimes takes a long time to write one. You know, you get stuck on <laughs> on a topic and you you can't you can't just come up with the lines you need sometimes. Um, but when you get good at them, you can write them quicker. And yeah, uh, but Bagheer, you said write a renge. You didn't say write a good renge. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. The next time I, we do a workshop, it'll be right a good one. For I, I might for a title, I might suggest storm warning. <laughs> Titles can be a lot of fun. You'll find when you get to writing them, you know they can be very elusive, or they can be, they can you know if you write a very subtle renge, you might need a title to kind of jumpstart the reader so they kind of know what what they're looking for, you know. So what did I not tell you and what do you want to know about Renge? What have I forgotten here? Well, I have a question, Gary, which is um, you say haiku-like verse. So I'm wondering in each verse, how much thought should we give to a break or, or uh, especially in the two, two line images or in the, in the two line verses? Well, two line verses is the biggest challenge. So I don't, I'm not really setting rules there. You know, they probably will be more haiku-like, but you know, there are a lot of people, I mean, I remember Vincent Trippi used to write a lot of two-line two haikus, so you can certainly write a, a decent two-line haiku. Um, I think the goal is to write haiku-like verses, and the whole renge, while it's a complete poem in and of itself, I would like to think you could break it apart and have standalone haiku if you, if you really wanted to. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not dependent, it's not leaning, you're not always leaning on the verse above you. You know, I mean, you're shifting and linking sort of, but you're not shifting dramatically like in a Rinku. You're really, the person above you is simply suggesting a direction for you to go. And as long as you're going within the theme, you can, you can drift away from the one above you. It's skillful if you can link back. It's maybe something I didn't say was uh, the, the last six verses, the most important verse, as far as you want to link back to the first verse is if you can. A lot of people don't know that you don't absolutely have to. I think it's stronger if you can somehow in the, in the sixth verse make a suggestion from something that was in the first verse. That not only ties the whole poem together, it ties all the theme together. I think it's very it's much stronger when you do that. Um, but if you don't do it, it could be open ended and you're just sort of drifting away in the in, in the poem. I mean. I think the the weather one we just heard was a was actually a really great example of a ringe. You know, they, they they hit all the topics, they followed the pattern. You know, they did everything expected to be done in a ringe. Of course, with poets who've all probably written them before, so they knew what they were doing. Um, what else? Somebody was going to say it. I forgot what it was, but um, I do see um, one another one posted. And this was by Judson uh, Evans and Sue Courtney and Jennifer Bird. Would you folks like to recite yours real quick? 
and you can unmute yourself. Hello. Um, this is my first time at doing this. Still night, the spark in the distance. Campfire embers, flicker of ancestors. In the myth, the coal is hidden in a fennel stalk. Hmm. That's as far as we got. Yeah. Okay. Start. What a great start. Um, yeah. Just change email addresses and finish that, you know. So. So they're fun to write, as you can see. You know, when you write, the more you start writing, I know some partners uh, that have been writing together for 20 years. They started a long time ago writing them and they had so much fun with it. They just made it part of their social connection with each other and they write them all the time. So, um, you know, you just, you know, let it go where it goes and have fun and get, you get to explore each other's writing styles. I mean, John Thompson, who I write with, writes probably longer verse than I do, uh, but we complement each other in lots of different ways. Uh, I'm thankful to John because he always pushes me. I get busy on other things and John says, let's go write a rain game. We go off and we hike to the nearest waterfall, you know, and we just write a lot of poetry along the way. So. Looks like we got one more on the chat. <coughs> one more on the chat. <coughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure, wasn't sure if Michael Reeling, if you had added that last one, because that's when we got cut off. But this is the one that he and I and Jeannie put together in our session. So I'll start workshop, yeah. India ink on a crooked guitar. Sliding on the strings, I get my balance back. In Mother of Pearl, a hummingbird on the string. Winged singing along the fret. Honey dripping makes the riff sweeter. Fast forth for coming. And then Michael. <laughs> Michael, can you give can you do one on the spot? I restring my heart to the beat of a bird's heart. Mm. Um, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> very well done. That's good. Wow. Okay, there is one more up here in the uh, chat. Pearl or hummingbird on the string. So do we have, it's right at 150, but let's, can we go ahead and have this one recited? Cody and Tony, and yeah, can you guys recite yours real quick? Is Cody still there? I am here. I'm not sure that ours is quite finished yet. I think we need one more. Yeah, well, we, I, I sent it to her, Cody. We have five verses, I think, good verses. Yes, okay. I think we need one more from Shirley and then we're ready. Well, we may not have time, so why don't you read what you yeah. have? Yeah. yeah. Start, Cody. Between tragedy and statistic, blood moon. Poppies <laughs> bend in a field of headstones. Um, all the small children flying flags amid the rubble. Oh, Shadows stretching, child soldiers into soldiers. Open poet, open the poetry read. Quiet, please. The marcher's swagger. Talk of another despot. It's not the same. An error's in. We pick up the pieces. Very good. Yeah, great. Thank you. Well, thank okay. you all for attending. I hope you learned something. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you a lot, Gary. And then